to my dearest great-grandchildren in all the years I lived in this manner. I discovered the answers to many mysteries that have tested my faith and helped me believe in things that I cannot see. Now, it's your turn to solve them for yourselves. I've enclosed the first of many clues. If you so choose to follow it, you too will unlock the greatest mysteries of all time. I am excited for what you will find soon. All my love, Great Grandpa Pithpath. Last week on Mystery Manor. Even though Parker warned her it was a bad idea, his stepsister Rose followed a clue that led her to getting locked in a secret room. Parker found a key to let her out and discovered the actual clue that Grandpa Piffpaff left behind, helping Rose see that she had followed a fake clue that was planted for them all along. Hey, I thought you were cleaning up. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Uh, I'm just getting to it. Uh, potting soil has tons of fungi and bacteria in it, so you can never be too careful. Well. I think I'll risk it. No, 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 no. I got it. You can uh, go and keep solving the mystery. Mm, really? Yeah, sure. Uh, we don't have time to waste, right? True, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, there's probably something waiting for you in the hope chest mm. right now. Good point. Oh, Parker. Mm -hmm. You did lock the hope chest when you left the room, right? Mm hmm. Uh, why? Uh, because fake clues, obviously. I do not want another one just waiting for me in that chest. Rose, I locked it and then I came back down and I put the key here in the middle drawer. Huh. Someone is really thinking like a detective these days. <laughs> oh, you. yeah, I am. Um, I, you should really get going. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. time, time is of the essence. Mm, sure, okay, I'm on it. Now back to this baseball. Oh, if someone gets to the inheritance before we do, at least I'll have this to fund my scientific explorations. And anyway, what Grandpa Piffpaff is leaving us can't be worth more than this, right? Wait, what? It's, it's only got numbers on it. Oh no. Oh, contamination, contamination. Oh no, 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 okay, um, uh, I, I, I hope that wasn't important. Ugh. Okay, um, oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 okay, 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 okay. I hope that wasn't important. Uh, um, well, 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 it, well, it wasn't, it wasn't even autographed, so, uh, but, oh, but it, it wasn't that fancy case. So, uh, oh, stop panicking, stop panicking, Parker, Parker, stop panicking. Nobody has to know. No one, no one has to know. Okay, okay, um, oh yes, okay, so, um, so there was the, um, okay, there, there, there was a, a four, okay, so, so, so four, and then there there was a a a, a five something, and, and then and then um oh, what was next? Oh no! Oh no! You've got to be kidding me! Oh, um, uh, okay, oh, okay. Uh, no, 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 no! Not that, not not the trench coat. That's too important. This looks absorbent. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Oh. You've got to be kidding me. Alrighty, let's see what we got here. Captain Rose, doesn't sound so bad. What is this for? I was such a cute baby. Wow. Sherlock! I missed you! Yeah, sorry about that. Now, where is Holmes? And why is he not with you? Oh, 
Okay. It's in Grandpa Piffpaff's handwriting. So it has to be the actual clue, right? Let's see. Red stitching all around. In the ink, the combination will be found. What could that mean? Red stitching all around. Sherlock, you have red stitching. Ugh, but what about the ink? In what combination? Oh no. Oh no, oh no. The combination must be inside of his stuffing somewhere. Okay, listen Sherlock. This is gonna hurt me a lot more than it hurts you. Do it for the mystery. He's, he's not alive, he's not gonna feel it. No, no, I just can't do it, I just can't. But surely there's no way that Grandpa Piffpaff would expect me to destroy my all-time favorite stuffed animal. Red stitching, other than you and Holmes. Speaking of which, where is he? Red stitching, red stitching. The baseball! That must be it! Thank you. Parker, I found the clue, do you? What in? The world? Okay, um, I, I know that this- This stuff... is way messier than when I left, and, and why is there ink everywhere? Um. Completely ruined. I, I, I... Holmes! Holmes? Why? Why? Why is Holmes covered in ink? Uh, I'm um, okay, well, well, I was, I, I was, and-, and... Parker! Let's play Memory Verse Mystery. Before we get started, listen carefully to our memory verse. But without faith, no one can please God. We must believe that God is real and that He rewards everyone who searches for Him. Hebrews 11.6 Now that you've heard the verse, everybody get on your feet to see if you can fill in the missing words. But without blank, no one can please God. Jog in place if you think the blank is faith and jump if you think it's hope. But without faith, no one can please God. Let's keep going. We must blank that God is real. Twist if you think the blank is doubt and wave your arms if you think it's belief. We must believe that God is real. All right, one last blank. And that he rewards everyone who blank for him. Hebrews 11:6. 6. Duck down low if you think the blank is searches and reach up high if you think it's hides and he rewards everyone who searches for him. Hebrews 11, 6. Great job playing our game. Now stay standing for a song. God made everything that I see. By his word, this world came to be. When I doubt, I know he's with me. Well, I know, I know. God made everything that I see. By His word, this world came to be. When I doubt, I know He's with me. Well, I know, I know, my faith is in You. I know that You are true. I believe when I can't see. You are real. No matter what I feel, there's proof. No mystery. My faith is in you God made everything that I see By His word this world came to be When I doubt, I know He's with me Well, I know, I know God made everything that I see By His word this world came to be When I doubt, I know He's with me I know, I know My faith is in you I know that you are true I believe when I can't see You are real No matter what I feel There's proof, no mystery My faith is in you I know that you are 
Great singing, everybody. You can take a seat. Seriously, Parker, my patience is wearing very thin. Explain yourself. B but I, I But do you understand that Sherlock here and Holmes were the dynamic duo of stuffed bears? <laughs> look, 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 I'm really sorry. I, things just got out of hand and I... Um, you think? Okay, just please tell me that nothing happened to Grandpa Piff Paff's baseball. Where is it? Right here. Is it like an important family heirloom or something? I'm pretty sure that the combination we need for our next clue was written on that baseball. And now that it's completely ruined, our entire mystery is at a standstill. How did this happen? Okay, well, well, I saw it on the shelf and I realized that an autographed baseball might be worth tons of money. Okay, and so you're going to take something that never belonged to you and sell it to fund your space travels and science streams, weren't you? I know, it's really bad, but as for your bear, I, well, I smudged the numbers on the ball and then I tried to rewrite them with the ink and then I spilled the ink so I was looking for something to clean it up and I, and I, I found- And you used the... him to clean up your mess. You know what the worst part about all of this is? That I ruined everything. That it was never about the inheritance or the money. None of that mattered. What's really important is the journal pages and what Grandpa Piff Paff had to show us. I know, I, I just... But you said we needed the baseball. I mean, I think so. Red stitching all around. In the ink, the combination will be found. So, that either means the combination was sewn in the bears or written on the baseball. Excuse me. Was written on the baseball. Well, let's check inside of the bear since he's already messed up. In the name of science. Hands off the bear. And this has nothing to do with science. What has gotten into you? Look, I feel terrible, okay? I, I, I guess I was hoping for the next clue that it's something other than the baseball. Well, too bad. It was obviously the next clue, especially if it had numbers, AKA a combination, written on it. I do think I remember a few of the numbers, if that'll help. Not sure, maybe. What do you even think it's a combination for? A locker? I remember some kind of safe that he had in the back of the wardrobe, so. Maybe that? Okay, well, let's go look. Honestly, what's even the point? We have to try something. I need to redeem myself somehow. Fine. So, what numbers do you remember? Well, I know I started with a four. Okay. And then there was a two-digit number with a five, but I can't remember if it was a 15 or a 25. All right, great. So four and then 15 or four and 25. Yes. Or 35. Parker! Uh, I know, Rose. I'm really sorry. Whatever. Let's just figure out what's numbers next. I don't remember specifics, but I think it was another two-digit number at the end. This is literally going to be impossible. Well, not exactly. In terms of probability with what we know, there are exactly 297 possible combinations. How is that supposed to make me feel better? Um, do you think we could figure it out without all the possibilities? How? Well, maybe it's a number that meant something to Grandpa Piff Paff. Well, four, 15, and 25. Or 30. I know. Five. Four, 15, 25. Think, Rose. Think. I remember, I remember April 25th is an important date because 
That's when Grandpa Piff Paff solved his first case. And April is the fourth month of the year. So 425, and maybe the other numbers make up the year. But what year was it? No idea. Do you know which case it was? The one with the coins that you just love so much. Rose? What? I know what year it was. Oh, really? Yes! There was a, a news article in that file with Grandpa Piff Paff shaking hands with the Queen, and I remember the year the article was published. It was 1974. All right, then. I guess we'll try it. 4-25-74? Yes. Fine. <laughs> All right, so I've got five, six, seven, eight. Wait a minute. Eight dollars and 39 cents? What good is this? You have got to stop this obsession with money. Okay, now let's figure out what Grandpa Piff Paff wants to show us. October 1st. Eight dollars and 39 cents. May not seem like a lot, but that amount of money taught me something very important about Jesus. It all happened when I was 10 years old. I had just gotten a brand new baseball for my birthday and was playing catch outside with my friend. Sadly, I threw the ball a little too hard and he didn't catch it. As I rushed inside, I realized that I had not only broken the window that led to our dining room, but also my mother's favorite vase. The window could be fixed, but the vase was so special to my mother. It would cost so much money to replace. My mother said that I would have to pay money out of my allowance until I could afford to replace the window and the vase. I knew this was going to take forever. I would have to save my allowance money every week for the next 100 years in order to pay for it. I would never be able to pay the price for what I had done. A couple of weeks later, I was in my room. My mother came in and asked how much I had saved to replace what was broken. I told her, I had $8.39, nowhere near enough. Then my mother said something I'll never forget. She said that she was going to pay for those items, and I was forgiven of the money I owed. I couldn't believe it. Even though I had been the one who had done wrong, my mother was going to pay the price for me. I was so happy. I gave my mom a big hug, and I asked her, why would you pay for something I did wrong? She explained to me a story from the Bible. A long time ago, the very first people who ever lived, Adam and Eve, did something that God told them not to do. This was called sin. Because of their sin, they could no longer be friends with God. Since then, everyone is born with sin, so we can't be friends with God either. But God loves us so much, and He wants to be our friend. So He planned for someone to pay the price for all the wrong things we've done. God sent His only Son, Jesus, to live a perfect life on earth. Then Jesus took the punishment for the wrong things we've done by dying on a cross. This was the only way to fix our friendship with God. Because I believe that Jesus died for my sins, God has forgiven me. Everything wrong that I've done and anything that I ever will do is erased in God's eyes. Knowing that my mother was going to pay for the broken window and vase made me very happy. But knowing that Jesus paid the price for my sin made me even happier. I never wanted to forget this lesson I learned 
so I have kept this $8.39 in my safe. That way, I can always remember what Jesus did for me and the great reward he has for me when I search for and follow him. I guess that $8.39 makes sense now, huh? Yeah. Um, Rose, do you think Jesus paid the price for my sin too? I, I mean, how can he really forgive me after how I've acted today? Of course I do. I mean, yes, you made a mistake by acting sneaky and selfish, but I was sinful too for the way that I treated you. We both need Jesus to pay the price for all of our sins. It's pretty amazing to think that he paid for everything I've ever done and everything I ever will do. I know. Man, these journal pages sure are valuable, huh? Okay, that's true. And I have to admit, I am learning a few things from Grandpa Piff Pat. Finally, you admit it. Okay, let's go clean up that study before Mom and Dad get home. For real. Okay. That study sure is a mess. Um, we know. We're actually on our way to clean it up right now. Hmm. He sure does spend a lot of time in that study for our groundskeeper. My thoughts exactly. Jesus paid the price for all my sin. Let's play Piece It Together. In order to piece together this mysterious picture, answer a few questions. Here we go. It's time to answer question one. Who paid the price for the window and vase that Grandpa Piff Path broke? His mother paid the price to replace the broken things when Grandpa Piff Path threw his baseball through the window. Now it's time for our next question. What causes our friendship with God to be broken? Our sins or bad grades? Right! Our sins, or the wrong things we do, cause our friendship with God to be broken. We're getting closer to discovering our mystery picture. Who did God send to pay the price for our sins? Yes, God sent His Son, Jesus, to earth to live a perfect life and die on the cross to pay the price for our sins. Now that we have three pieces of our picture in place, see if you can piece it together. Shout it out when you solve it. It's a flashlight! Great guesses, detectives! Jesus paid the price for all my sin. Now, let's pray and thank God for all that He has taught us today. Hey God, thank you for sending Jesus to pay the price for my sin. We know we can fix our friendship with you by choosing to follow Jesus. We love you, amen.